Hi, it's Jason here from Clean Energy Reviews, and today we're going to do a review of four of the well-known solar charge controllers. So let's get into it. So first up is the well-known Tracer from EP Ever. This is the 40 amp unit. Um, they have reasonable sized terminals on the front and a COM port which can be used together with the MT50 display. Uh, a temp sensor input as well and these have a maximum PV voltage of 100 volts. Also a nice clear display which just gives you basic information, voltages, currents, temperature, that sort of thing. So next we have the Outback Power 40 amp MPPT. Um, this is actually made by EP Ever um, and it's just been rebranded by Outback Power. So this model is a higher voltage, 150 volts maximum PV voltage, VOC, and it has no display, and it uses the MT50 display um, for programming and monitoring. It's quite a nice display, it gives you a bunch of information, and um, it's quite easy to use. Now, this controller has some massive um, screw terminals which could fit quite a large cable size and it also has the temperature input as well. So next up is the Renergy Rover 40 amp model. This has a 100 volt maximum PV input voltage and it seems like quite a well made unit. It has a large rear heat sink um, although the front terminals are quite small and a little bit difficult to get the cables in. Um, it has a nice large display which you can view a bunch of information, your load, currents, temperature. One of the unique things about this unit is that it gives you a percentage which is, I'm assuming, its state of charge and it seems to be based purely on voltage, so it's not technically accurate. State of charge can only be measured with a shunt at the battery. So it could be a little bit misleading, but we'll take a closer look at that later. Now the Rover comes with a Bluetooth adapter, so you can monitor it through a phone app and also a temperature sensor. So it's quite a good package with everything included. So I just connected up the Renergy Bluetooth module to show you the, the app. It's um, quite a powerful little, little application. It gives you all your basic information and recorded data. And of course you can set all your parameters, your charge voltages and alarms and load settings as well. So. Very, very good little app actually, I'm quite impressed. Now the last of the four controllers is the well-known Smart Solar from Victron Energy. This is the MPPT 15035, which has a 150 volt maximum PV input voltage and a 35 amp charge current. So. They are quite a simple unit with no display, of course, um, reasonable size terminals, and the VE Direct port. So to monitor the Victron, we have the Victron Connect app, which I'll quickly show you. It's just connecting. Now this is quite a powerful app. It gives you a lot of information about the battery voltage, PV voltage, and obviously has uh, all the configuration settings for the charge voltages and that sort of thing. It can give you history, um, trends and that sort of thing. So it's a very powerful little app. All the uh, four charge controllers are connected to a common battery bank. It's just two 100 amp hour 12 volt uh, gel lead acid batteries connected in parallel. And we also have the Victron Smart Battery Sense, which is a Bluetooth 
sensor that gives us a uh, readings at the terminal so we can get very accurate um, results. And to monitor all the different units and ensure that their uh, readings are accurate, we also be using the Victron um, BMV battery monitor, um, which is basically a smart shunt. And the solar panels are connected through this isolation box and each of the four DC isolators is connected to the four charge controllers so we can turn them on one at a time and check their uh, performance. Now strangely enough the first thing I noticed when I powered up the four units without connecting the PV was that only three of them were measuring the correct battery voltage so the EPFA tracer was 12.7 also the Outback was 12.7 and the Victron Energy was 12.7 or 12.68 and also we can see the same reading on the battery monitor and however the Renergy Rover is reading 12.5 so this is a little bit disappointing um, 0.2 a volt is quite significant on a 12 volt battery so it's a little bit odd and um, I'll just cross check that with the multimeter down here so you can see as well and yes we've got 12.69 so it is accurate um, however the rover isn't accurate so that's a bit odd and that... so behind me is the simple test array here we have two Canadian Solar 250 watt polycrystalline panels. These are linked together in series, so 500 watts in total. Each panel has a VOC of around 37 volts and a VMP of roughly 30 volts. So let's kick off the testing. First up, we'll turn on the PV to the tracer and we can monitor the power through the Victron BMV. Now 6.8 amps. Check the PV voltage. So it's settled on 57 volts, the maximum power point. And we're getting 340 watts so it seems to yep so it's settled on roughly 56 57 volts so that was quite fast and 340 watts now the outback power Voltage is sweeping through, tracking the maximum power point. It's taking a little bit longer. It's ramping back up. 296, we'll check here. So 337. Oh, there we go. So it's roughly settled on 56 volts as well and 340 watts or 336 so next we'll try the Renergy and I've actually set up the Bluetooth app so we can track it And the voltage is still looks like the open circuit voltage it hasn't started yet. There we go. So it's sweeping through. It 
it's ramped up to 56 volts now similar to the other two units and 340 watts which can be confirmed through the BMV so it's settled on 343 and almost 56 volts so quite a bit faster and the last but not least uh, the Victron and I'll have to quickly switch over to the Victron app So just to explain how the state of charge of a battery bank is accurately calculated, I've logged into the Smart BMV on my uh, off-grid house. Um, I'm using a 48 volt uh, lithium battery bank here. And I'll just quickly show you the settings that the BMV uses to determine state of charge. So Obviously, um, the current is the most important measurement, but it also needs to know the battery capacity, the charge voltage of the battery, and more importantly, the perkett exponent and the charge efficiency factor. So lithium battery banks are very efficient. So this is set at 98% and perkett's exponent is almost one, whereas a that acid battery is about 1.2 because they're much less efficient. So using this information, um, 
the BMV has quite a sophisticated algorithm and it can accurately monitor the state of charge of the battery.